This is my multiplayer review for Tapestry, a civilization game, uh, published by Stonemeyer Games, designed by Jamie Stegmeyer. It plays in 90 to 120 minutes, which I can say is around the playtime I've seen. Even with inexperienced players, it can be played in just over two hours, a four player or even a five player game. Um, so let's see the review. Let me start with the positives here on the components. Uh, I would say in Stonemeyer game style, the component quality is generally top notch. Uh, we'll start with these landmarks. They're extremely, they look extremely good. Um, there's a lot of different styles on them. I think the detail is good. The coloring is really cool. I, you know, uh, the, they, you know, they don't feel cheap, I would say. Um, the artwork on the game is, is generally very good. Uh, you can see here on some civilizations, it looks, you know, the artwork here looks really good. Um, the tiles look really good. They look really good when they fit together. Uh, I mean, on the board, it looks amazing. And the artwork uh, style works with everything, the game board, uh, the pieces, everything looks really good. Um, let me talk about one of the negative on the components. I feel like these player boards, this and uh, these guys, should have been made out of thicker cardboard. Um, you can see here, it's just it's kind of a thick, uh, I don't know, like a thick paper, I guess is the way to think about it. I do like the coating on it. Some people, some people didn't, but I think the coating is fine. I think it helps keep the pieces from moving. And, uh, yeah, I would say even the artwork on the tapestry cards works well. So overall, the components are uh, high quality. Uh, maybe some of the better components I've seen in a Civilization game. Usually, the components aren't that great. Um, so let me talk about the gameplay. So in terms of gameplay, there's some really good things the game brings to the table. Uh, one is the fast turns. Turns in this game are going to move along pretty quickly. Usually you can, I mean, because there's, I would say, low player interaction, you can usually plan your turn out while the other people are going, take your turn, do your stuff kind of independently, and then you know, have the gameplay move on really quickly, which is one of the reasons why it can stick to, to two hours. Another thing is, is the rules are relatively simple for a civilization game. Um, uh, you know, they've made a big point of only four pages of rules. Now, that's a little bit of a misnomer because a lot of the rules end up on the tapestry cards or on this reference sheet that they have, which is written very well uh, and is used a lot. So you'll see each of the symbology uh, is on here. Um, I will say one thing that the symbology makes is extremely good. I may have seen no other game that has this many different symbols that are so clearly depicted and I think it it just goes into showing how much thought and and time Jamie put into designing this game and making it the way he envisioned it. Um, one other thing that I feel like uh, is a very big positive of the game is it feels like you're advancing through the game. It feels like your turns are getting more interesting. Uh, you're doing more stuff. Like at the beginning of the game, you might be you know, just conquering one place, but at the end of the game, you're conquering, you're getting two bonuses, and you're getting like a second civilization. Um, and the last thing is, I think all the decisions in the game are very interesting. I think you are, uh, you're having to kind of look at where your opponents are going because you might want to get the landmarks, but you also have to like plan out a few turns uh, and decide, oh, you know, I need these resources to get, to be able to do this action later. Um, because resources are so tight, every resource makes a big difference in the game. And, uh, you know, we'll talk about that in terms of the negatives. So, one of the negatives is that these tracks, the, the basically there's, most of your turns are going to be advancing up one of these tracks. They don't feel as rewarding or as good as each other. Um, so I'll take, for example, uh, I played one game where I decided just for fun to, I didn't think it was 
going to be a good strategy, but maybe maybe it was. I was going to try to get a whole bunch of secondary civilizations. I think I got five of them, um, and I got it through various ways. But let me just tell you, it's not a good strategy. And while it was fun to get the civilizations, they didn't give you a lot by the time you can get them. Um, so, like, if you're advancing up the red track and you're getting, you know, a civilization at the very end, that does not feel nearly as good as the technology track where you get to advance up a track again and you get a bunch of resources to do it. Or the, you know, uh, I think, you know, that one and the uh, exploration track where you get two space tiles, or you can put down two space tiles, are really big things you can do. And the last one is the science track getting to here. I don't know. I mean, if I wasn't getting the bonus points, I might not even go to this one because it's just, it may not be very good for you. Granted, the one before it is really good. So I just, I don't think that the tracks are very well balanced. And maybe, it, maybe it could use some more play testing. And I think, you know, if on the military track, you've got a new civilization, maybe like in the third or I guess third era, or maybe late in the second era, that could be a, a big change. And, and maybe, you know, maybe in the expansion, they're going to make some tweaks to these tracks and have like a, a thing you put over it, or maybe even a new board. I don't know. I mean, I guess shipping a new board would be kind of expensive. Um, so one of the positives was the fast gameplay, but I think it's also a negative. Um, clearly, Jamie wanted to make a, you know, fast civilization game. And I think it's a... A uh, very difficult thing to do. In order to do that, he's introduced randomness. Now, uh, we'll talk about the areas of randomness. So that randomness comes from drawing your tapestry cards, which is basically a random endeavor. You're only going to get, you know, maybe like two or three of them in your first couple of errors. Um, I guess you can get four or five if you want to. But even that, everyone is different. So unlike a game, like a drafting game, uh, drafting variant of Terraforming Mars, where you're seeing a bunch of cards each era, you only get a couple of these. And I think maybe that was intentional. I mean, I'm sure it was intentional, but I think it detracts from the game because getting the right tapestry yard can, could lead to 100 points extra in the game or 50 points easily, like early in, early in this game, since it is an engine building game. Um, the second area of randomness is the technologies. So you're gonna get uh, some technologies that are available, and some of them are gonna work amazingly well with your civilization. That is going to significantly affect uh, you know, what your strategy is, but it may just be that the technology works extremely well with your civilization or doesn't, and you, you, know, you need to go up that tree for whatever reason. The third area of randomness is these tiles. So when you explore, you're gonna get whatever's on the tile. Um, some tiles are just better than others, and I think the best are the uh, ones that let you remove houses or ones that give you technology. Those are probably the two best tiles, and there's less of them in the game. So if you randomly happen to draw one of those early in the game, it can lead to a, a big game uh, improvement uh, just by doing exploration. And the last thing that introduces randomness are the dice. So there's, uh, you know, the science die, which... I think I'm okay with, but there's also the conquer dice. So you say you conquer something and there's this black dice, which you need a resource or usually you want to get, you get some resource usually, but two of the sides are question marks, which means only if the tile that you conquered has something on it, you get. So there's a third chance that you're going to get nothing if you conquer one of the original areas of the board, which I think is a problem. I think, uh, uh, maybe the question mark should have been choice of resource if there's nothing on it, or I don't know, maybe had less question marks on there. It, it's, I think that can really cause you some problems early in the game if you're going down a military strategy. Um, it's, it's so bad that I almost never conquer a place that I haven't, I, I haven't explored unless I, unless I'm late in, later in the game and the resource doesn't matter that much to me. Um, so I think that's probably the biggest problem and that leads to, uh, kind of a runaway uh, points problem in some cases, or in a lot of cases. I think every game I've played, uh, some people have come away impressed with the game and, and love it, and it's like, oh, it's amazing. And almost equal number of people have said, 
I don't ever want to play this game again. And I think that's a an issue with them feeling substantially out of control of their destiny, um, just by amount of randomness. And I can tell you, you know, I lost some games, maybe because of randomness, and I have won games because of uh, I, everything just aligned with my civilization. I, I end up with a really good civilization. I end up with all the stuff I needed to make it happen. So, and and the point spreads were amazing. Like it was like around 200 points and went all the way up to like 350 for some of the better games. Um, and I think that alienates people from wanting to play the, play the game again. Um, another critique here is a lot of the civilizations I feel like are different ways to get resources um, by doing different things. Now, Sorry, I know... I don't know that, but I've got this game in my blood. It's called Feelings. You want to try it? No. Um, the, the civilizations, uh, basically a lot of them, not all of them, but a lot of them feel like, oh, either you advance on the science track or you do this thing and you get more points or more, more, uh, resources. Um, and I don't know. I mean, I, I don't know how to make it better, but they do feel like different in some ways, but they also feel kind of the same. And I'm not sure, you know, maybe with the expansion when they add, when he, he's already said he's gonna be adding more civilization. So I think that may solve that problem. Um, the last thing is the text could be more interesting. So uh, if we go into here into the tech, uh, tech pile, we'll see a couple texts. So it's like, oh, this one, actually this one is a pretty powerful one, but it gives, lets you take a square ability again. But a lot of them are like, oh, build a house, or yeah, basically build a house. None of them, I don't think I saw any that were advanced up a tech, tech tree, or maybe there's one, like you roll the tech dice. This one lets you draw a tapestry card. I don't think particularly interesting. I don't know how to make it better. And, and it maybe just be the, the design goals to make the game faster and simpler cut out a lot of this stuff. And, and maybe it's gonna work for a lot of people that may not have ever played a civilization game before. But I think for maybe the core board gaming audience, it it detracts from the strategic nature of the game in some, in some ways. So uh, overall, I like the game. And if you actually watch my solo review, you'll see I like it a lot for solo play. Um, but I can't give it a high rating. I'm, I'm on a six or a seven out of 10 for the multiplayer play because of all these reasons. I think that uh, there's too many people that they play and they never want to play it again. And I think that a lot of that is because of the RAM nature of the, of the game. In, in a lot of ways, the RAM nature, I think, brings out the, the uh, solo play a lot better. So anyway, uh, thank you for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please like it, please subscribe, and please take a look at our other videos. Again, this is Tapestry from Stonemaier Games.